There are so many questions for parents, teachers, and faculty after the mass shooting in Florida. Uh, joining us now to talk about maybe some answers, we have the Executive Director of the Connecticut Association of Public Schools Superintendents, Fran Rabinowitz. Uh, Fran, thank you for joining us, first and foremost. Thank Glad you for having me. Yes. Uh, all right, why don't you tell us, in a real general sense, wh what is the feeling you're getting from a lot of the superintendents out there? Well, I think a lot of the superintendents are outraged again that something like this has occurred. Mm -hmm. um, we feel that we need to be the protectors of our um, students and certainly of our teachers and staff. And um, we are uh, incredibly bothered by this. Um, we find it pretty unconscionable that in America, parents such as yourselves can't send students to school and feel 100% safe. Right. Well, I think as parents, I think a big question on all of our minds is what kind of training do our teachers and faculty at schools go through? Because we can't 100% prevent something like this from happening, it, as we've seen so many times. And, you know, it's a great question because I would say to you, I was superintendent in Hamden when the um, <clears throat> Sandy Hook um, massacre took place. and. I had a safety committee that ran for almost an entire year putting a safety plan together. That committee was made up of police and fire because they're the experts. Um, yeah. We as superintendents are not. We need to call on out, outside expertise to put a plan together that really makes a difference. And so we have plans. Um, we have plans <clears throat> that um, teachers are trained on every single year, whether it's an active shooter, whether it's a chemical spill, et cetera. But and go ahead, go ahead. I, well, I do believe that, you know, knowledge is power. Yeah. And I think that we need to um, train our teachers as best we can to, um, to meet whatever um, safety issue comes but, their way. But with knowledge being power, we've got five years of knowledge, sad knowledge here in, in Connecticut. Uh, in, how have things changed here in five years? And is, just, is there more frustration that maybe not as much is being done? Well, I think that there is um, a degree of frustration on all of our parts. I think that there's no magic bullet here. This is a complex issue. And I think there are three three parts to the issue as I see it. Um, number one, we've got to continue to work on um, gun control. Um, we've got to do something like that. And I'm not talking about denying the Second Amendment or anything like that. I'm talking about um, banning automatics and semi-automatics and background checks and all that you have already spoken about. I think that it's um, our responsibility to be working on school security constantly. It can't be something that happens after something tragic happens. It has to be on everyone's mind um, day one and always. And, you know, Connecticut has been very good about uh, releasing school security money, um, yep. you know, each and every year to build school security. And we all have security plans and we've taken security measures in all of the school districts. And thirdly, honestly, it's around the mental health um, services that need to be provided. I would be the first to say that in Connecticut and nationwide, we don't have enough of that. Um, both in the school and in <clears throat> the community. And I think those three pieces um, need to be part of what we're thinking about as we move forward. Um, and one or the other is not going to be a magic ball. Uh, well, I like what you're saying. Uh, regardless of what people think we should do, just the idea that it needs to be a multifaceted approach. Absolutely. A lot of people are looking at one part of the solution and Can't. evaluating it. Like you said, is it a magic bullet or not? The answer is always going to be no. no. You need to do more than no. one thing. Uh, a, a quick question. Uh, some of those facets that uh, people are mentioning, I see some people saying, what if we armed the teachers directly? Is there, have you gotten any feeling from your constituents as to wh whether they like that idea, whether they don't? My, um, my 
thinking on that and feeling from talking to teachers, and I've talked to hundreds of teachers yeah. in my positions, uh, I do not feel that that is where they want to be. Teachers sign on as educators. They yeah. don't sign on for that. And I believe that we should be able to provide them with a um, culture and a situation that they are safe and free to teach. I have to imagine you've heard from a lot of teachers over the last few days, a lot of administrators. What are they telling you? How are they feeling? I think they're feeling that there's time to do something. Yep. I think that um, we're thinking that the, the, uh, the words that we've used in the past of our thoughts and prayers are with you are fine, and it's good to have thoughts and prayers, sure. but yep. we need to act. We need to do something. This one's a little different, isn't it? Yes, it is. I think I would say that the um, the thinking now um, is very different from what it was um, five years ago. Okay. We've grown, and to be honest with you, I think the students are leading the way. They're saying, sure. "Adults, you know, come on, we need action here." Mm -hmm. Well, Fran, thank you so much. You're for welcome. Taking the time, a pleasure to have okay. you. Okay, Fran Rubin.